Kyushu Kaiko Bridge is the world's longest suspension bridge that you've probably never heard of. And having travelled a thousand kilometres across Japan by bicycle for over two weeks now, I've been excited at the prospect of cycling over it into Shikoku, filming it in 4K with drones, all the while laughing and wearing Ray-Ban sunglasses, pretending to be cool. It was going to be magical. And then when I got to the bridge, I discovered you can't actually cycle over it, and therefore I was an idiot. Seriously, who builds a $3 billion bridge that can't even hold a bicycle? It's like building a Saturn V rocket without an adequate cup holder. Anyway, every cloud has a silver lining. And the change of direction would mean we had an excuse to head towards one of Japan's most stunning landmarks, Himeji Castle. Still, it wasn't all happy news, because for the next two days and 200 kilometers, as we explore the shores of Japan's inland sea, amongst the chaos of things going wrong at every turn, we find ourselves lumbered with a travel companion with a talent for making situations at least three times worse. Here he is, sitting alone. It is, of course, Ryotaro. Good morning, everyone. And now I'm joining the tour. <laughs> So how are you feeling, Ryotaro? Ready for the 45 kilometer cycle today? Not sure. Not sure? Not sure. You're pretty fit, you're a pretty fit young yeah, man. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. You're trying your best. Yeah. I must say, I do feel quite envious. We're sitting at the base of the bridge and there's some sort of party going on in the park. Do the barbie. Barbecue. Lucky devil. Why won't I have a barbecue? Why can't I have a barbecue? No, why, why do we have a barbecue? We'll take a barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> Just get a barbecue and strap it to the bike. I'd love to. Anyway, let's gear up and get out of here. Stretching with Riotero. Oh, shit. <laughs> My back stretching as well. So the last couple of weeks, you guys have been telling me that I should have got a road bike because my bike is, of course, a mountain bike with really thick tyres, which makes it really hard when cycling or unnecessarily difficult. Um, but unfortunately, the, the bike has actually broken. There's something wrong with the chain. There's a crack somewhere in this region. So we've had to get a replacement bicycle. I don't know how long it's going to be before we fix this, so we might have to even write it off. But for now, we've actually got a road bike. So finally, I have a bike with thin tyres that's going to be a lot easier to cycle. Oh, here we go. Let the second half of the journey begin. Let's go. Let's go. I'm now midway through my journey across Japan from Yamagata to Kagoshima. And for our trip with Ryotaro, we'll be heading first to Himeji, then on to Okayama City. And it's certainly a journey of contrast, from sprawling cities to endless rice fields. excited about this guys do we have to cycle down the main street leading up to the castle oh, that's, that's incredible look at this yeah look at that castle i've actually been wanting to come to himeji castle for about two decades uh, now not because of its historical importance but because it was in my favorite james bond film you only live twice in 1967. yes in the late 1960s james bond himself visited himeji castle to attend a top secret ninja training base ninjas Top secret, Bonsan. This is my ninja training school. So you can probably imagine my disappointment to discover that Himeji Castle definitely isn't a secret ninja training base. Himeji Castle, as it appears today, has stood for 400 years. It was one of Japan's first UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And it's the most visited castle in the country, with its dazzling white appearance visible from miles away. Some even say it looks like a heron taking flight, which is bollocks, because it's a castle. But what makes Himeji so special is it's one of the few Japanese castles to have stood the test of time, where 9 out of 10 castles you find in Japan have been burnt to the ground at some point and rebuilt from scratch. Even in World War II, when Himeji City was all but wiped off the map by over 700 tonnes of incendiary bombs, the bomb that struck the castle refused to go off, leaving the castle one of the last buildings standing in the city. And then again in 1995, when Hyogo Prefecture was decimated by the Great Hanshin Earthquake, the castle itself was left virtually undamaged. Simply put, Himeji Castle is the castle that refused to die. 
And to me, that is what makes it the greatest castle in all of Japan. Ryotaro's face aside, this is one of the nicest views I've had on the trip so far in the morning. And in the morning sun, it just stands out beautifully like a beacon, a beacon of history. Bacon of history. A bacon of history. What the fuck are you on about? And I brought the sunshine for us. He I brought the cool. sunshine. So right. this is the challenges you guys have oh, sent in. We're Just now going to get our sunshine. challenge of the day. Yesterday, the capsule. What are you doing? Keep the castle. What's going, what's going on? <laughs> Why is he here? All right, so Chris has to be over optimistic and positive for a full day. No complaining at all. No complaining at all. What a load of shit. Is that Pan Man talking? <laughs> this is talking. See, he's telling you as well. He's telling you. Not to complain what? and be optimistic. Yeah, like, like he is. Fabulous day. Yeah, nice. It's going to be a fabulous day. Ryotaro has just mentioned you have a friend here. Yes, here in Himeji, in a sweet shop. He owns a sweet shop? Mm. Well, why didn't you say so earlier? Well, I did that <laughs> already, but you're not listening. I wasn't as listening. usual. I don't, I don't, I'm not listening to Ryotaro most of the time when he speaks. No, it's usually optimistic. something ridiculous. Be like, optimistic like and a, no complaints. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ryotaro is a great guy and has lots of great things going for uh, him. He's so brilliant, yeah. Really glad I came here. The view of the castle is incredible. It looks so wow, just wow. Hands down, the most impressive castle I've seen in Japan so far. After getting slightly lost in the back streets of Himeji, Ryotaro calls ahead to Mr. Mori, the sweet shop owner, who eagerly greets his business card in hand. <laughs> Wagashi, meaning Japanese confectionery, often straddle the line between being sweets and works of handcrafted art. So much so that eating them is often accompanied with a sensation of guilt. Typically enjoyed alongside matcha green tea, they're made from plant-based ingredients such as mochi rice cake, uncle red bead paste and various fruits, making them healthier than their western confectionery counterparts. To put it bluntly, you can eat as many as you want and never die. A lot of these shops are quite well hidden though. This shop is like... Two meters across. There's a mm. little, there's a, a big street, and then there's a very tiny two. little. It's almost like a speakeasy bar or yeah. something. The way it's concealed behind this like little door. But this isn't going to do much for my reputation. I've already eaten Kobe beef, black ramen, and fried chicken galore. Now I'm stuffing myself with Japanese sweets. But Japanese sweets are actually a bit more healthy than what we're used to in the West. Yeah. Um, there's less sugar. Um, for example, instead of using sugar, we've got red bean paste inside this pancake here. I want one of each of these. All these different coloured ones. All right, and. Um, the orange. That orange? Orange in a mochi. No grey. Orange. No grey. Orange. Simasen, but don't mock that side. And so, um, he's gonna buy me the orange and the grey. And he's paying. <laughs> I'm not. Do you know what? I could be happy and optimistic, but I didn't need to be generous today. That wasn't in the challenge, was it? So, Ryotaro is friend of a friend, Mori Sam, who's over there. And his little shop is getting absolutely rammed. Um, he started, he was a salary man until he was 34 years 34. old. And then he decided one day, I'm going to do something fun, I'm going to start a sweet shop. And he did. And I like it when people do that. A lot of people, when they reach their mid 30s, sort of. They should see the enlightenment well, they, well, suddenly. They either get enlightened or they give up mm. on their dreams, I find. Yep. So it's nice that he followed his and made sweets. Like I did. You followed your dream? Yeah, I did. To be on the Abroad Japan channel? Not really. Our end point today is the small port town of Accor, and for dinner we get stuck into a bustling seafood diner just a few miles down the coastline. Yeah, so we've just stopped off at a little barbecue spot. Because we're cycling around the uh, inland sea, there's lots of places where you can sit down, relax, and eat f seafood. Yeah, this place you can have a barbecue, it's wonderful. However, because Riotro is not a great cook, um, we figured it wouldn't be a good idea to go to a barbecue because. Ryotaro is such a great cook. He's so oh, he's so wonderful. His cooking skills are second to none. I love it when Ryotaro cooks. You just remember but I just thought he cycled so hard today. He shouldn't cook things. He should relax. It's been a nice cycle though. Once we got out of Himeji, things started to get a lot more pleasant. I hate cycling in cities. I mean, I, cycling in cities is really fun, but sometimes it's nice not to cycle in a city. Happy, happy. Oh God, this is... Brilliant. Full of br hope, br hope, dreams. And, oh, it's so wonderful. Even if it is burning my throat from the inside out. I think I did a pretty good job today being overly optimistic and happy. I think that's because I know at the end of this cycle today, 
we have a massive pile of Japanese sweets waiting for us at our hotel. Kindly given to us by Mori-san, the chap at the, uh, the shop. Real tourist friend of a friend of a friend of a brother's uncle's mum's friend's cousin's house. Yeah. <laughs> Don't kill our cameraman. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, that's another another day done. Yep. Off goes the GoPro. Very good. Very good indeed. Well, guys, it's been a long day. Um, I was, I'll tell you what, being overly optimistic and happy all day has taken more energy out of me than the cycle has. <laughs> this is the sweet I've been looking forward to all day. This is mochi rice cake with an orange inside it. And it's very gooey and it's exploded everywhere. <laughs> oh, it's literally just an orange with, with rice cake around it. That's quite good. I was expecting it to just be some sort of flavouring, but it is just an orange in a rice cake. Oh, I've never seen that before. Oh. First time. Now let's finish so. off this cider. Did I complete this challenge though? That's the big question, guys. The thing is, I, I did. I keep. It's hard. It's hard. You 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 keep forgetting to yeah. manipulate and change your personality. Yeah, he's just so used to being sarcastic all the time. It's true. Do you think I'm different on screen? compared to how I am in real life. <laughs> Not. Right. Mm. Oh, I thought you were going to say I'm much nicer in real life. Happier. So I just, I just have to tell the truth to the, the viewers, you know what I mean? Bye guys! Bye. <laughs>After cycling for several weeks now, I've been growing accustomed to most small towns looking more or less the same. But turning the corner from our hotel in Akko village, we come across a colourful hoard of 1950s and 1960s memorabilia. Every now and then on your travels across Japan, you'll stumble across a Showa era museum dedicated to goods and items from a time when Japan's post-war economy was booming. For Japanese society, it was a golden era that many people are still keen to remember. So take you back if you're nostalgic? Not really. But look, it says salt in here. They used to um, need a special license to sell, sell salt. Really? Because it was so important. James uh, Bond, license to kill. Japanese business so License to, to salt. Sell, sell salt. License to salt. What license to salt. Sell salt. All right. Dialing it. And here is our mission for today. Uh, try to learn three Japanese tongue twisters by Oliver79. Try to learn three Japanese tongue twisters, that's good. We've at least got a Japanese guy with us today. We can finally use Ryotaro's main skill, his ability to speak main Japanese. Main skill? Yeah, we don't, really oh, use, right. we don't really use the fact that you speak Japanese much on this channel, so... That's true. We like can do that today. Some good news, ladies and gentlemen. The bike is back. My beloved mountain bike that has seen us through the first part of the journey has returned. The gear system on this bike was screwed uh, two days ago and they've actually rebuilt it and replaced it and now it's as good as ever, ready to get back on the road. So three minutes into the cycle and my adulation of the bike being repaired has quickly turned to horror and frustration. So it turns out, and I didn't realise this, that the bike now only has, I think it only has three gears. And what this means is Riotto has already disappeared from my view ahead because he can go out, he can go fast on his bike without having to pedal like this like a maniac. I can't go fast, Riotto. Why that? Because the bloody gears have been turned into. There's only like two or three gears on this bike now. That's why you keep shooting ahead and I can't catch up. Okay guys, so I've been struggling to cycle all morning, uh, to the point that my so-called friend, Riotaro, he just sort of disappeared from view gradually and now he's gone and left me here in a field. But I've just pulled over to have a look at the bike because I've been cycling with just three gears this morning and it's been really hard. And it came to my attention that there aren't three gears on the bike, um, there aren't three gears at all. There's in fact one gear, or indeed no gears, it's just a chain on a, on a, just a fucking BMX. It's just nothing, look at this, what's this? That's where the gears were. It turns out the charismatic bike repairman that my team took the bike to didn't so much as fix the gear system on the bike as just cut it off altogether. The cable's been severed and it is just now basically a BMX bike. One chain, one gear, bollocks, I'm fucked. It's important to point out this isn't some sort of clever narrative set piece. Even I'm not stupid enough to remove a sophisticated gear system on an overpriced bike for entertainment purposes. And it was only a matter of time before my wrath caught up with the man who encouraged me to invest in the unfixable British bike several weeks prior to my journey. I'm gonna kill him. 
he chose that bike. He chose a British bike knowing full well that the gear system couldn't be repaired in Japan. This is where I'm gonna kill Ryotaro, right here, by this waterfall, Into absolute water. middle of nowhere. Nobody's gonna find him, except you, because I've talked about it on camera now. Only and I'm gonna beat him to death with this rock. Uh, only if you can do it. Oh, come out. All right, you're lucky. I couldn't get the rock out. All right, <laughs> give me a Japanese tongue Long twister. Run. Tongue twister. Yeah. Oh, of the day. All right. The first okay. one of the day by this waterfall. Uh, well, um, actually, I came up with this one. Okay. Uh, it means a bus being exploded by the gas. Bus gas bakats. Bus gas bakats. Bus gas bakats. Bus gas bakats. What does it literally mean? Bus gas bakats. It's got bus. Bus is literally bus. a bus. Then gas is in gas gasoline. Gas. Then bakats is an explosion. It's an explosion. Busker. This is quite sinister. Who thought this up? What's the uh, context of this tongue it's twister? It's been popular for like you know, decades. Actually. What a bus, a bus, bus blowing up in Japan? Yeah, bus going back in by gas. Okay, here we go. Bus gas bagatsu. Bus gas bagatsu. Bus gas bagatsu. All right. Yes. Well, All the right. first one. I just came up with the easy one. The easiest one ever. All right. Save your second one for later. Now to get back on the bike of death. Cycling in one gear, ladies and gentlemen, is is not fun. It's actually, I can feel my legs creaking under my own weight now because it's just taking so much energy to pedal. <laughs> That's your curse. Yeah, a curse that you instigated by buying a bike that couldn't be fixed in Japan whatsoever. No, the thing is, it's about the timing. You know, it's about the timing. Like, you know, it just suddenly happens. Like, your, your bike got destroyed and yeah. You know, everything. Mo yeah, notice how the moment Ryotaro turned up, it all went to shit. Aomaki gami, akamaki gami, kimaki gami. That means blue rolled paper, red rolled paper, yellow rolled paper. Aomaki gami, akamaki gami, kimaki gami. I'm gonna say it. Aomaki gami, akamaki gami, kimaki gami. Aomaki gami, akamaki gami, kimaki gami. Aomaki gami, akamaki gami, kimaki gami. If no, that's not acceptable. Aomaki gami, akamaki gami, kimaki gami. Is he, is he getting harder? It's, I could do it if I wasn't cycling a one gear bicycle across a it's suspension bridge. No I think I could do it. Was, oh, fuck. oh my god, guys, my legs have taken one hell of a beating today, given that I'm cycling on one one gear. Good news is Ryotaro's found us lunch. So you found us a little okonomiyaki restaurant. Yes, it was so tiny actually. I actually went in there to ask for the what a parking place was. This is very atmospheric. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's a little, nice little town, you know, by the by the sea. Oh, you too. See you soon. Feels like we just we just broke into some woman's house. These kind of Japanese restaurants are quite good though, where the owners just taken their house, stuffed a kitchen in it with some seats, and turned it into a restaurant. What flavour okonomiyaki did you get, Mr. Ryotaro? I got deluxe. With deluxe like, okonomiyaki. Deluxe with pork, the shrimp, and the oysters, everything all together with the noodles. And what you've got? I've got pork. pork. That's it. Pork and very, uh, very simple, very peasant. Very peasant. Yeah. Very peasant. I love that on a t-shirt. Very peasant. It's time for our third tongue twister, ladies and gentlemen. Our third Japanese tongue twister from the master of tongue twisters himself. Tokyo Tokyo Kyokakoku means Tokyo Patent. Permission agency. All of the tongue twisters there have been really weird. The, fir the first one was a bus being blown up. Yeah. The second one was about, what was the second one about? It was about like uh, the ro red roll paper. Red roll, roll paper. paper. And yellow roll paper. And the third one's about a patent office in Tokyo. Well, it's nothing to do with the meaning, is it? Well, it? well, it is. Like, these are pretty weird tongue twisters. Who thought these up? Anyway, what was it? Tokyo, Tokyo, Taka, Taka. <laughs> what? Tokyo, Tokyo. No, that's already wrong. Tokyo, Tokyo. Tokyo, Tokyo. Kyoka, Kyoku. Kyoka, Kyoka, Kyoka. Tokyo, Tokyo. Kyoka, Kyoku. Yeah, it's getting closer. Close. All right, I'm going to practice the three tongue twisters while I eat my okonomaki. Sure. And at the end of the day, when we drop you off at the station, I'm going to hammer out all three tongue twisters brilliantly, perfectly, without a single problem. No errors. Do you like okonomaki? Do I like okonomaki? Yeah, I love okonomaki. I, love I really do. Yeah. Mainly because it's drenched in mayonnaise. Mayonnaise makes everything good. Am I right? Am I wrong? Let us know in the comments. Such a desperate attempt there at audience interaction. Get, let's get the audience interacting. <laughs> Interact, okay. Sure, sure. Question, right? Questioning. Pose, pose a philosophical question to the audience and we can look at the comments. Philosophical questions. Philosophical question. Should we live or should we be dead? No, that's horrible. That's very sinister. Well, it's a, it's a philosophical question, isn't it? That's not a philosophical <laughs> question. That's a <laughs> fucking sadistic question. <laughs> So 
we're now in the outskirts of Okayama City, guys, and uh, we've really got to hurry up because Ryotaro's actually got a train to catch to Hiroshima, where he's going to fly back to Tokyo, and that leaves at 3.50, and it's currently about 3.20. So we're really pushing hard to get through the city, get to the station. How long we got to your train? 20 minutes. So we more or less made it in the nick of time. There's the station. In front of us. Finally, hey. finally. If you miss this train, you miss your plane from Hiroshima to yes, Tokyo, yes, right? Back to, yeah, yeah, Tokyo. So, um, otherwise, I would have had to like stay here a few more days, cycling with him. Oh, no. Definitely not. Definitely yeah, not. That would have been awful for all involved. We barely made it. Well, it's been quite the 200 kilometer journey. Together, we've seen the world's largest suspension bridge, the most beautiful castle in all of Japan, stuffed ourselves with sweets in Okonomiyaki and irreparably screwed my legs on a one-gear bicycle. But for Ryotaro, his journey is very much at an end. <laughs> loads, loads, of people, loads of people just looked at you in horror then when you went like that. <laughs> I genuinely thought that was the end of Risotero. Anyway, no, we, we made it though. We made it, well done. All right, now, gonna... before you get the shikas, and I've got to nail the three tongue twisters. What's the oh, first one? Uh, the first one was... Um... Baskas bakatsu, baskas bakatsu, baskas bakatsu. That's it. And the second one is... Akamakagami, aomakagami, kimakagami. Oh, so you made it. And the third one is... Tokyo, Tokyo, kyoka, kyoku. Yeah, Tokyo, that's... Tokyo, kyoka, kyoku. Did I do it? Is it what kind of? Yeah. 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 All right, off you go. All right. Bye, see you guys. You're see ya. Gonna, you're going to miss your train. Go. Yeah, I do. Oh. See you guys. All right, see bye. See you. Bye, 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 bye. See you. bye. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the last we see of Risottero. Turns out cycling in one, one gear is anything but fun. But thankfully, now Risottero is gone, I've got his bike, so that's the upside. Join me back here tomorrow as we cycle from Okayama to somewhere, I'm not sure yet where it is, I think it's Fukuyama. It'll be just me, you, and the road. So I'll see you then, guys, no matter where you might be watching from, out there in the big wide world. Thanks for joining us today. And remember, bus, 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 oh god, I was going to do a really good tongue twister then, I fucked it. I fucked it all up. Damn it. years I've traveled Japan far and wide and it's all been building up to this moment a piece of vending machine